Hey guys, Hackasploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. In this video, we will be picking up uh, from where we left off, uh, you know, within the Windows Privilege Escalation series. So uh, we've already covered the following techniques. So we've covered insecure service permissions, uh, the unquoted service parts, uh, weak registry permissions, and we're now working on insecure service executables. If you want to follow along with this series, uh, you can access this uh, this particular room on TryHackMe. It's called Windows Privesk. Uh, it's a free room, and it's a fantastic, uh, you know, in my opinion, a fantastic room uh, in regards to teaching you how to elevate your privileges on a Windows system. All right. So um, what we're going to be taking a look at today, as I said, is uh, how to exploit insecure service executables. Um, so I've already gained access to the target system and I've obtained a meterpreter, se uh, meterpreter session. So again, get use ID. You can see that uh, we currently have access to this particular system uh, as the unprivileged user called user. So, you know, I can also verify this by saying get privs. And you can see that uh, these are really the only privileges that we have on the target system. So our job is to exploit, uh, you know, insecure service executables in order to elevate our privileges. So the tool that I'm going to be using to identify the vulnerable service, or rather the actual executable that we can take advantage of in this case is WinPs as we did previously. So I'm currently within the root of the C drive and I had uploaded the WinPs binary, the x64 binary into the temp directory. So if I list out the contents of this directory here, you can see we have WinPs x64. So I'm just gonna open up a command shell or a command prompt session. So there we are. We'll give that a couple of seconds. Uh, there we go. The channel is created and uh, I can execute it by saying winpees uh, x64.exe and we're only interested in services. So I'll say services info. There we are. And I'll hit enter and that's going to enumerate. Uh, well, that's weird. Um, not really sure what I specified in. Oh, there we are. So winpees uh, x64 not x65, uh, services uh, info. There we go. That'll enumerate uh, or provide us with a list of services that we can take advantage of, right? So if we take a look at the interesting services uh, section here or under services information, uh, the service that we're going to be exploiting in this case is the file permission service right over here. And you can see the current state of the process is stopped and uh, the actual execution, uh, or rather the actual execution of this service is set to manual, which means we need to manually start it uh, and stop it. And in terms of the file permissions, WinPeace tells us something very interesting. It tells us that really everyone has access to the uh, to, to this particular path here. So uh, in this case, or you know, in this particular privilege escalation um, attack vector, uh, if we have access to this particular directory and we can make changes to it, we can essentially replace this particular service executable with our own malicious executable. And in our case, we're going to generate a meterpreter payload with MSF Venom and uh, we'll just call it file permission service. So we'll match the file name here and then replace this executable with our own. And once we start it, uh, once we start the service, it'll then execute our own malicious payload that we've replaced. All right, so following along with the actual documentation provided to us with uh, this particular TryHackMe task, uh, you can see that we can verify that this is the case, or we can actually take a look at this particular service in depth uh, by using the SC utility. So we can say, uh, you know, SCQC file permission uh, service. So let me just make sure I get the name correctly. So there we are, file permission service. There we are, so file permission uh, SVC and hit enter. And th what we're looking for here is we want to uh, verify that this particular service is started with system privileges. And in this case, you can see the service start name uh, value or configuration is set to local system, which means when this service is started, the this particular executable will be executed with system privileges, which are the highest uh, privileges on a Windows system. So we also want to make sure that that is the case. Otherwise, if it was being executed with uh, just, you know, standard, uh, you know, non-privileged uh, with a non-privileged uh, permission, or maybe with a user account that's non-privileged, then we would essentially inherit the privileges, the privileges associated with that particular user. 
So now that we've confirmed that, we can also, uh, in addition to using WinPeace, we can also utilize the access check utility that is already on this system for us. So we can head back to the root of the C drive. And if we take a look at the priv-esque directory, um, I believe it's, uh, there we are. So dir, and we have the access check utility there. So we can use access check uh, and take a look at the actual permissions, right? Uh, in regards to who can make changes to the, uh, to the uh, to this particular service and its uh, you know service directory um, so I'll just copy the arguments there because I don't want to type all of that in and I'll just e execute access check so we'll say um, access chk.exe and I'll paste in the arguments there so that's just going to accept the EULA and we're querying the file permission service more specifically the actual directory so I'll hit enter and you can see that everyone really everyone on the system has uh, read and write access and you can see uh, we can see uh, it tells us right over here file all access and uh, for the users uh, group file all access so that's pretty much all that we need and that means that we can make changes to any files within this directory so in this case we will be uh, generating a uh, payload with msf venom a meterpreter payload with msf venom and we'll, uh, we'll you know we'll just rename it to this particular uh, you know, to this particular name here. So file permission service. So I'm just going to copy that there and then we'll upload it and replace it. And then once we start this service, it'll execute our own malicious payload. So I'll open up a new tab here and uh, I'm currently working within, there we are. So track me Windows Privesk and I'll say MSF Venom payload and we'll generate a, an X64 meterpreter payload. So Windows X64 meterpreter and we'll, we can also use a staged payload. So lhost is going to be my IP address. Um, so I'll just copy that there. That is uh, right over here. That's the tunnel zero interface. Paste that in there. And the L port option, I'll just set it to, you know, one, two, three, four. Format is exe. And we'll output that into file permission service, file perm uh, service dot exe. Let me just, uh, let me make sure that that is correct. So file perm service, correct um yeah no syntax error there and i'll hit enter that's going to generate the payload for me give that a couple of seconds it usually takes a while um and of course you can also encode it with shikata ganai um and in that case of course you'll use a 32-bit meterpreter payload all right so that is generated and we can upload it directly via the meterpreter upload feature or we can transfer it via cert util um, and, uh, you know, we, we can actually try that out, but I've already covered that in the past. So I'll just go back into Meterpreter and we're going to go under C and uh, the actual path to that particular service is program files. So C, uh, CD program files. Uh, sorry, that is uh, CD program files. There we are. And we are looking for the, the file permissions service directory. And if we list out the contents of this directory, we have the file permission service.exe uh, file here. So we can replace it by saying upload. And I stored the MSF uh, Venom payload under documents, try hack me and Windows Privesk. And the name is just file perm service.exe. So I'll hit enter. That's going to upload it. There we are. So that's replaced the previous executable. Now, of course, I would recommend taking a backup of the original one. Otherwise, uh, that, you know, that's going to be a huge indicator of compromise if they ever investigate the actual executable for this service. I'm just going to create a resource script to set up the handler for me. So vim handler.rc, and I'm going to say use multi, multi handler, set the payload windows x64, meterpreter, reverse TCP, set lhost to my IP address, my VPN IP address, which I'll just copy again, because I can't, for the sake of me, remember it, uh, and then set the L port to 1234, and then run, all right? Write and quit, and we'll say MSF console resource script handler.rc. That's gonna set up the handler for us automatically. So give that a couple of seconds. Yeah. MSF console usually takes a while. There we are. Finally, that sets up the handler for us automatically. Great. So start with the reverse TCP handler. I'll go back into my meterpreter session. I'll just open up a shell session here. And uh, we can say uh, we can use SC to start the service because it's currently stopped. So SC start. 
and uh, file perm SVC. So once I hit enter, we should get a an elevated meterpreter session on our listener. So I'll hit enter. That's going to execute successfully. If we take a look at the, the actual listener here, you can see sending stage. We'll let that send the stage. There we are. The stage is executed and we get a meterpreter session. If I say get use ID, enter authority system, and we've successfully been able to elevate our privileges. Um, sys info. Let me just make sure I verify that. Yep, there we are. So enter authority system, and we now have privileged access on the target system. So that's a fairly simple uh, privilege escalation. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's died. I think we needed to migrate. There we are. So the service did not respond to the start or control request in a timely fashion. So let me actually show you a very cool uh, Metasploit module that can automate the migration of a service. So uh, I'm just going to take you through that right now. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, start the reverse TCP handler again. So let me just exit from the dead session. So sessions, do we have any jobs running? No. Okay. So uh, I can hit exploit, right? And that's going to start the reverse TCP handler. And then of course I can say SC uh, start file permission service, hit enter. And then once I get a meterpreter session, I can run the post uh, exploitation module migrate. So I'll give this a couple of seconds so I can say run post windows and manage migrate. Hit enter. It's going to run the module against the target. It's then going to spawn a new process called notepad.exe. That's, of course, not a real process, but it's just called notepad.exe. There we are. It migrates into that process ID, get use ID anti authority system. So now, regardless of whether or not the SC, there we are, you can actually see it tells us the service did not respond to the start or control request, and we still have access to the target system. So I just wanted to highlight that that cool little module there that's quite helpful in scenarios like this. So, you know, we still have access, and then, of course, you can set up persistence and, uh, you know, maintain access to the target system really easily. So, um, I think that's done now. So we've completed that one and we can move on to the next privilege escalation attack vector, which is through the Windows registry. More specifically, we'll be taking a look at auto runs or auto run executables. All right, so that's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you have any feedback, leave it in the comment section. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, you can do so by, you know, contacting me on Twitter or by tweeting at me. Or you can join uh, uh, the Hackersploit Discord server. The link is in the, the description section. And uh, we can, you know, take the discussion further. So that's going to be it for this video. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated. And this is a formal thank you. So thank you, Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress, and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated and you keep us making even more high quality content for you guys. So thank you.